Goosebumps Piano Lessons Can Be Murder by Arl Stein Chapter 1 I thought I was going to hate moving into a new house, but actually I had fun. I played a pretty mean joke on mom and dad while they were busy in the front room showing the moving men where to put stuff. I went exploring. I found a really neat room to the side of the dining table. It had big windows on two sides looking out onto the backyard. Sunlight poured in, making the room brighter and a lot more cheery than the rest of the old house. The room was going to be our new family room, you know, with a TV and a CD player and maybe a ping pong table and stuff. But right now, it was completely empty, except for two grey balls of dust in one corner which gave me an idea. Chuckling to myself, I bent down and shaped the two dust balls with my hand. Then I began shouting in a real panicky voice. Mice! Mice! Help! Mice! Mom and Dad came bursting into the room. At the same time, their mouth nearly dropped to the floor when they saw the two grey dust mice. I kept screaming, Mice! Mice! Pretending I was scared of them, trying hard to keep a straight face. Mom stood in the doorway her mouth hanging open. I thought she was going to drop her teeth. But dad always panics more than mom. He picked up a broom that was leaning against the wall, ran across the room and began pounding the poor defenseless dust mice with it. By the time I was laughing my head off. <laughs> Dad stared down at the glob of dust stuck to the end of the broom and he finally caught on it. it was a joke. His red got really red and I thought his eyes were going to pop out from behind his glasses. Very funny, Jeremy. Mom said calmly, rolling her eyes. Everyone calls me Jerry, but she calls me Jerome when she's upset with me. Your father and I sure appreciate your scaring to death, and we are both very nervous and overworked and trying to get food into the house. Mom is really sarcastic like that. I think I probably get my sense of humor from her. Dad just crushed the bald point on the back of his head. That really looked like a mice, he muttered. He wasn't angry. He's used to my jokes. They both are. Why can't we at your age? Mom asked, shaking her head. I am, I insisted, I mean, I'm 12, so I was acting my age. If you can't play jokes on your parents and try to have a lot of fun at 12, when can you? Don't be such a smart guy, Dad said in me his tongue. That's a lot of work to be done around. You know, if the jury, if we help out, he shoved the room to it. I raised both hands for it, shielded myself from the danger and back to me. Dad, you know, I'm allergic, I cried. Allergic to dust? He said. No, 
I let you to work. I expected them to laugh, but they just stormed out at the room, muttering to themselves, You can at least look after Bonkers. Mom called back to me. Keep her out of the movers away. Yeah, sure, I called back. Bonkers in our cat, and there's no way I can keep Bonkers from doing anything. Let me say right out from Bonkers. It's not my favorite member of our family. In fact, I keep as far from Bonkers as I can. No one can explain to the stupid cat that she is supposed to be a pet. Instead, I think Bonkers believes she's a wild, man-eating tiger. Or maybe a vampire bat. Her favorite trick is to climb up on the back of her chair or a high shelf and then leave with her claws onto your shoulders. I can't tell you how many old t-shirts have been ripped to shreds by this trick of hers or how much blood I've lost. The cat is nasty, just plain vicious. She's all black except for one circle over her forehead and one eye. Mom and Dad think she's just wonderful. They're always picking her up and petting her and telling her how adorable she is. Bonkers usually scratch them and makes them bleed. But they never learn. When we moved to this new house, I was hoping maybe Bongos would get left behind, but no way. Mom made sure that Bongo was in the car first, right next to me. And of course, the stupid cat threw up in the back seat. Whoever heard of a cat who gets car sick? She did it deliberately because she's horrible and vicious. Anyway, I ignored mom's request to keep an eye on her. In fact, I crept into the kitchen and opened the back door, hoping maybe Bongos would run away and get lost. Then I continued my exploring. Our other house was tiny, but new. This house was old. The floorboards creaked. The windows rattled. The house seemed to groan when you walk through it, but it was really big. I discovered all kinds of little rooms and deep closets. One upstairs closet was as big as my old bedroom. My new bedroom was at the end of the hall on the second floor. There were three other rooms and a bathroom up there. I wondered what mom and dad planned to do with all those rooms. I decided to suggest them. One of them we made into a room. We could put a widescreen TV in there to play the games on. It would be really neat. As I made plans for my new video game room, I started to feel a little cheered up. I mean, it is easy to move to a new house in a new town. I'm not the kind of kid who cries much, but I have to admit that I feel like crying a lot when we move away from Cudderville, especially when I had to say goodbye to my friends, especially Sin. Sin is a great guy. Mom and Dad don't like him too much because he's kind of noisy and he likes to burp real sound. But Sin is my best friend. I mean, he was my best friend. I don't have any friends in New Kush. Mom said Sin would come stay with us for a week or a few weeks this summer. That was really nice of her. Especially since she hated her, hated his burping so much, but it didn't really cheer me up. 
Exploring the new house was making me feel a little better. The room next to mine can be a gym. I decided we will get all those great looking exercise machines they show on TV. The movers were hauling stuff into my room so I couldn't go in there. I pulled open a door to what I thought was a closet. But to my surprise, I saw a narrow wooden staircase. I guessed it lead up to an attic. An attic? I had never had an attic before. I bet it's filled with all kinds of great old stuff. I thought excitedly. Maybe the people who used to live here left their old comic book collection up there and it's worth millions. I was half up the stairs when I heard Dad's voice behind me. Jury, where are you going? Up, I replied. That was pretty obvious. You really shouldn't go up there by yourself, he warned. Why not? Are there ghosts up here or something? I asked. I could hear his heavy footsteps on the wooden stairs. He followed me up. Hold up here, he muttered, adjusting his glasses on his nose. It's so stuffy. He tufted on a chain suspended from the ceiling and an overhead light came on, casting pale yellow lights down on us. I glanced quickly around. It was all one room, long and low. The ceiling slant down on both sides under the roof. I am not very tall, but I reached up and touched the ceiling. There was a tiny round window at both ends, but they were covered with dust and didn't let in much light. It's empty, I muttered, very disappointed. We can store a lot of junk up here, his dad said. Look around. Hey, what's that? I spotted something against the far wall and began walking quickly towards it. The floorboards squeaked and creaked under my sneakers. I saw grey quilted cover or something large. Maybe it's some kind of treasure chest, I thought. No one ever accused me of not having a good imagination. Dad was right behind me as I grabbed the heavy cover with both hands and pulled it away <coughs> and stared at a shiny black piano. Whoa, Dad murmured, scratching his bald spot, staring at the piano with surprise. Whoa, whoa, why did you leave this behind? I shrugged. It looks new, I said. I hit some keys with my point finger. Sounds good. Dad hit some keys too. It's really good piano, he said, rubbing his head lightly over the keyboard. I wonder what's doing hidden up here in the attic. It's a mystery, I agreed. I had no idea how big a mystery it really was. I couldn't get to sleep that night. I mean, there was no way. I was in my good old bed from our old house, but it was facing the wrong direction, and it was against a different wall, and the light from neighbor's back porch was shining through the window. The window rattled from the wind, and all these creepy shadows were moving back and forth across the ceiling. I'm never going to be able to sleep in this new room, I realized. 
It's too different. It's too creepy. Too big. I'm going to wake for the rest of my life. I just lay there, eyes wide open, staring up at the weird shadows. I had just started to relax and drift off to sleep when I heard the music. Piano music. At first, I thought it was coming from outside. I quickly realized it was coming from up above me, from the attic. I was straight up and listened. Yes, some kind of classical music. Right over my head. I kicked off the covers and lowered my feet to the floor. Could be up in the attic, playing the piano in the middle of the night. I wondered, it couldn't be Dad. He can't play any note. And the only thing Mom can play is chopsticks. And not very well. But it's bonkers, maybe. I told myself. I stood up and listened. The music continued very softly, but I could hear it very clearly. Every note. I stared to make my way to the door and stubbed my toe against a curtain that hadn't been unpacked. Ow! I cried out grabbing my foot and hopping around until the pain faded. Mom and Dad couldn't hear me. I knew. Their bedroom was downstairs. I held my breath and listened. I could still hear the piano voice above my head. Voice, I guess I was a little scared. Who's up here? Something brushed against my face and I nearly jumped out of my skin. It took me a long, shredded moment to realize it was a, the light chain. I pulled it. Pale yellow light spread out over the long, narrow room. The music stopped. Who's up here? I called squinting towards the piano against the far wall. No one, no one there, no one sitting at the piano. Silence, except for the floor walls creaking under my feet. As I walked over to the piano, I stared at it, stared at the keys. I don't know what I expected to see. I mean, someone was playing the piano. Someone played it until the exact second the light went on. Where did they go? I ducked down and searched under the piano. I know it was stupid, but I wasn't thinking clearly. My heart was pounding really hard, and all kinds of crazy thoughts were spine spinning through my brain. I leaned over the piano and examined the keyboard. I thought maybe this was one of those old-fashioned pianos that played by itself. A player piano? You know, like you sometimes see in cartoons. But it looked like an ordinary piano. I didn't see anything special about it. I sat down on the bench and jumped up. The piano bench was warm, as if someone had just been sitting on it. Whoa! I cried aloud, staring at the shiny black bench. I reached down and felt it. It was definitely warm, but I remained myself. The whole attic was really warm, much warmer than the rest of the house. The heat seemed to float up here and stay. I sat back down and waited for my heart, my racing heart, to return to normal. What's going on here? I asked myself, turning to stare at the piano. 
of black wood was polished so well I could see the reflection of my face staring back at my face. My reflection looked pretty scared. I lowered my eyes to the keyboard and then hit a few soft notes. Someone had been playing this piano a moment, a few moments ago. But how could they have vanished into thin air? Without me seeing them, I plunked another note, then another. The sound echoed through the long empty room. Then I started heard a long creak from the bottom of the stairs. I froze my hands too on the piano keys. Another creak, a footstep. I stood up surprised to find my legs all trembling. I listened. I listened so hard I could hear the air move. Another footstep louder, closer. Someone was on the stairs. Someone was climbing into the attic. Someone was climbing for me. Chapter 3 Creak, creak. The stairs came up beneath heavy footsteps my breath caught in my throat i felt as if i would suffocate frozen in front of the piano i searched for a place to hide but of course there wasn't any creak creak and then i stared in terror a head poked up above the stairwell Dad! I cried. Jerry, what on earth are you doing up here? He stepped up into the pale yellow light. This thinning brown hair was standing up all over his head. His pajama pants were twisted. One leg had rolled up to the knee. He squinted at me. He didn't have his glasses on. Dad, I... I thought... I spotted. I knew I sounded like a complete jerk. But give me a break. I was scared. Do you know what time it is? <laughs> Dad demanded angrily. He glanced down at his wrist. But he was wearing his watch. It's the middle of the night, Shuri. I... I know, Dad, he said, pointing to feel a little better. I walked over to him. I heard piano music, see? And so I thought... You what? His dark eyes grew wide. His mouth dropped open. You heard what? Piano music, I repeated, up here, so I came up to check it out. And... Jury! Dad exploded. His face got really red. It's too late for your dumb jokes! But Dad... I stared to protest. Your mother and I... Killed yourself on packing and moving furniture all day. Dad said, sighing wearily. We are both exhausted, Jory. I shouldn't have to tell you that I am in no mood for jokes. I have to go to work. Tomorrow morning, I need some sleep. Sorry, Dad, I said quickly. I could see there was no way I was going to get him to believe me about the piano music. I know you excited about being in a new house, I said, putting a hand on the shoulder of my pajama shirt. But come on, back to your room. You need to sleep too. I glanced back at the piano. It glimmered darkly 
in the pale yellow light as if it was breathing, as if it was alive. I pictured it trembling towards me, chasing me to the stairs. Why is it? Weird thoughts. I guess I was more tired than I thought. Would you like to learn to play it? Dad asked suddenly. Huh? This question caught me by surprise. Would you like to take piano lessons? You could have the piano board downstairs. There's room for it in the family room. Well, maybe. I reply, yeah, you might be neat. He took his hands from my shoulder, then he tightened his pajama bottoms and stared down the stairs. I'll discuss it with your mom. I'll discuss it with your mother, he said. I'm sure she'll be pleased. She always wants someone to be musical in our family. Pull the lights, chain. Okay. Obediently, I reached up and cleaned off the light. The sudden darkness was so black, it started.